Hello everybody and welcome, my name is Eric and today I'm going to be fulfilling a viewer's request where he asked Eric how tough are the bottoms of the inflatable boats and I'm gonna go over those details, what things to look for, you know, whenever you're purchasing, depending on the brand. I personally prefer the Saturn boats, they're, to my, in my opinion, they're a great value for the money. They're not necessarily perfect, they have a few quirks and I'll go over a few of those, but in overall they're fantastic in my opinion. But the many brands out there like Briz, Aleco, Sea Eagle, Zodiac, those are like the heavy duty ones. Anyway, let me bring you guys in closer and show you guys some, some examples. Now the first thing I'm going to talk about is material, uh, how these are built. Uh, there are several um, thickness levels out there for um, the inflatable boats and the bottom and overall their shape and, 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 um, and material that's being used. This is a hack right here, this is a 900 denier PVC. These you may find mostly on the cheaper index models, they're very inexpensive, they're mostly toys. But most inflatables will be using 1100 denier. This is what Saturn uses. It's quite tough actually. And I got a knife in my hand because I want to show you guys a quick example of what I'm talking about. So this is the standard uh, one that you find on toy-like inflatables. Uh, I'm gonna take a single layer. And it usually penetrates very easily. It punctures quite easily. Uh, now if you happen to get a model that has a double layering, well, things change a little bit. It gets a little tougher. That would be cool, but you, you will rarely find that on these. <clears throat> See? It penetrates a little harder. And let me show you guys what Saturn uses. This is the 1100. I'm going to use a single layer. Show you guys what it takes to penetrate. There we go. And this is a sharp knife, by the way. Now, some models, the heavy-duty ones, like the one I have here. This is my Saturn SK285XL. It's, my, one of my, it's probably my favorite one that I use the most. For rivers and lakes here in Florida because it's got a double layering of this at the bottom and uh, it's tough it takes a lot of work for it to get punctured in, in fact whenever I go in the rivers uh, which tend to be the more the most treacherous ones because in the ocean here in Florida well you don't find a lot of debris in rivers you, you tend to get into a lot of shallow waters and debris and rocks and this one does the job well anyway let me go and puncture this one again this takes a lot of work in order to puncture it that's why I don't worry about it Putting pressure, and there you go. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and also, one of the facts you have to keep in mind is we price points. Basically, the heavy duty models tend to be more expensive and heavier than the standard models that I got back here. But even standard models have their um, their good properties for protection. Now I'm gonna get you guys in closer. <clears throat> First, I'm gonna show you guys a standard model from Saturn. Uh, this is a uh, a Saturn CK380 um, Kabot. It's a, a little wider than a standard Kubota. This is a standard Kubota. This is wider. I use this one for ocean travel because it handles the oceans and swells quite well. And this model, although it doesn't have double layering everywhere, it does have some guards. For example, most of the wear and tear on inflatables you will find here at the back, like the first two, three feet. If you happen to get yourself a cheap one and it doesn't have any guards back here, you can actually patch it up. Uh, I made a video, I'll put it somewhere in the corner where I did those on one of my old ones. It was a cheap, uh, inexpensive one and it didn't have the uh, the guards and I got a puncture. But most models, if you can get one that has the guards around or at least until here, that'll be great. And in the front, it usually gets the most wear and tear whenever I'm going into an island and I'm ducking in that's usually where it gets the wear and tear and if you happen to get a model that has a keel make sure it comes with a keel guard see and I'll explain what this patchwork is about in a minute see it is soft they're soft inflatable so they're not um, I mean <laughs> impervious to damage however for what their purpose and use is and if you use caution you're gonna be just fine. Now let me talk about this patchwork right here. You see this keel guard? And this is the thing I talk about. Saturns, they're fantastic inflatable boats. They have a great price point. Like if you want something like this on a Sea Eagle, you're gonna pay two, three times more what this one cost. I kid you not, you can look it up on the internet. <laughs> they're quite expensive. However, they have a, a, a bit of a quirk. For example, when I inflate the keel on this Saturn, 
It moves the keel guard to the side, exposed in this section. And I came back from a trip and I noticed some gashes. No penetration, but some gashes in here. I was like, wait a minute, that's not right. I'm usually docking into the islands and I'm pushing debris. So I went ahead and patches up. So now I don't really have to worry about it. And it just works just fine. And now we're gonna move into the heavy duty models. These are literally double layered from the middle. Let me show you the example. Lift this up. You guys see this section right here? This is regular 1100 in here, right? PVC. And they put a double layer from the middle covering the entire bottom. I do not worry at all when I'm in the water with this one. Like when I'm in the river, I literally have no worries. The only things I have to worry about is that sometimes the fin gets scratched a little bit, but it's not a deal breaker. See? The fin is still intact, it just gets scratched a bit. But it keeps the entire bottom of the inflatable boat intact. So, to give you guys a quick conclusion of what to look for when you want to get an inflatable boat, standard, you want to have yourself an 1100 denier PVC. That's usually 1.5 millimeters thickness. You want that. You don't want nothing lower than that. There are some other models out there that use 2000 denier, which is really thick but you have to keep in mind the price points. So if you're in a budget, if, if, if you're in a budget and you wanna get yourself one that's actually inexpensive, I'm gonna go on the computer as well so I can show you guys a few examples. I'm, I'm not gonna leave you empty handed on that matter. Uh, if you wanna get yourself an inexpensive one, then grab yourself, you can buy order in Amazon and places like that. Some patches, some H6, HH66 uh, vinyl cement, some sandpaper, rubbing alcohol. Like I show you guys, you can guys can check the video. I'm gonna put a link of it below. And uh, yeah, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go inside and show you guys a few examples on the internet so you know what to look for and what to expect. All right. Okay, everybody, so now I'm in my computer screen and I got several tabs open because I wanna show you guys a few things, what to look for, what to expect. Right now I'm in both to go and this is a, an SD365, this is considered a standard model. Uh, it doesn't have double layering, uh, it has the side guards and all that. And at the bottom it has the protection, see, that you want that. You want that protection all around the bladders. Or, my, or like my CK380, like this one, the one that I personally own, that I show you guys, same thing. That's that's what you want, you want those, those guards on the sides and all that, yep. That's exactly what you want. Anyway, uh, the next thing I want to show you is, is the next level above. Now, I show you guys my um, my heavy duty 285XL, which is this one. That's the one that I show you. But if you want an actual boat, here it is. This is like the pinnacle of what Saturn offers right here. Um, they have, I mean, it has patches all over the place. Double layer like my Kabot. It's even got the, the guards on top. I mean, it's just ridiculous. See, it's got guardings on top. It's got the guardings on the bottom. It's just, it is a ridiculous thing. I mean, but the only situation is they tend to be more costly. As you can see, they're a little more costly and they're heavier. Heavy wise, we're talking about the floor itself is 58 pounds because it uses an aluminum uh, floor where you can stay upon. The uh, the boat itself is 140 pounds. You put in the oars and all that, and it's easily 150 pounds. It can get heavy. That's the only drawback. But if you don't care about weight, go for it. I mean, one of these will take care of you. If you're worried about uh, the toughness of an inflatable boat at the bottom, go for a heavy duty. And if you can afford it, if you want to jump into like the echelon of everything, like the tough, tough, toughest of the tough. You want to jump into like a West Marine. This is an example. You don't see a whole lot of patching here and there. The situation is, this uses a material called Hypalon. Let me put it on perspective for you guys. Here's a video of a truck running over a Hypalon bladder. Check this out. <laughs> it's, just, it's just stupid. It's stupid. You see that? <laughs> a PVC wouldn't be able to withstand that. Just to give a heads up. It just, it just wouldn't. It just takes the beating. So if you want to go top of the echelon, you can afford it. You want to go for the top of the top, 
West Marine, or maybe a Zodiac, but mostly a West Marine will do the job. So, but as you can see, the price alone, you include taxes and fees. This can this can easily rack up to be three thousand dollars, maybe more. I I'm not kidding. Registration and all that included. Yeah, you're looking at about three hundred bucks. Whereas something like this, you're looking maybe at two K. See what I mean? And you you're getting something good out of, out of this, you know. Uh, let me see, there was, I think there was something else that I want to show you. Oh yeah, the last thing I want to show you guys is budget. Okay, so let's say we're going to go into a budget scenario. I'm going to pull up the Saturn uh, CB330. This is considered a budget. See, 600 bucks, inexpensive, no double layering, no guards, no nothing. I mean, it's tough enough. It uses 1100 denier PVC. You'll be fine, you know, going to lakes and oceans. Uh, don't be too rough with it. That's the only thing, and as I show you guys, uh, uh, I show you a little link. The areas where you want to put like extra patchings, it's back here. You, uh, let me let me open this up. Back here, between here, about two or three feet, you want to put some extra patchings. If you choose to put like an uh, inflate uh, one of those uh, pool noodles to create a, like a like a fake uh, keel then you might want to put some patches right here in the middle for protection and maybe up here so whenever you let's say you land on an island the first part that the boat's going to touch uh, is going to be this part it's going to be more wear and tear and maybe a couple of patches here i want to make sure i went over that all right well i guess that will conclude this video i want to give special thanks to the viewer who actually suggested this he suggested it about a week and a half ago i finally got the chance to do it i almost didn't do it today because uh, we have a tropic storm coming in but i noticed that it that it calmed down so yeah maybe i got an hour i can pull it off and that's what i did i took an hour in this video so guys i hope you found this video informative thank you so much for watching see you guys on the next one later